Hi everyone, it's good to see you. You are seeing me from my home office, which is the corner of my living room. I suspect a lot of you are doing your work these days from places that don't really feel much like work places. You're doing a great job. Wherever it is you've set up a card table or tried to stack your laptop on top of some old books, like I've got going right now, <laughs> you're doing a really good job. It might not feel like it. It might feel like you're just sort of limping your way through, making it up as you go along. Maybe you are. Maybe that's okay. This is a holy week unlike any other, and we're all doing things every hour of our lives that we could not have ever imagined we would do. One of them, I have to admit, uh, happens today. You will have Good Friday worship today, but it won't be like anyone you've ever known before. At Augustana, we're used to a Good Friday service that is a tenebrae service. It's a service of progressive darkness, one where we read each of Jesus' seven last words from the cross. But at Augustana, we also pair it with huge and beautiful musical works, whether it's from our choir or our organ or even just the congregation itself lifting up their voices with hymns even as the sanctuary grows darker and darker and those words are harder and harder to see and sing. By the end, we're all sitting together in the darkness and it gets pretty dark in there. Maybe things feel just as dark for you at home right now, but you're doing it alone. You're by yourself. You don't have your community physically around you. And that's hard. It's strange, it's new and not welcome. I hope nonetheless that the Good Friday service will have for you which will use those seven last words in a familiar pattern, is one that can be a really meaningful worship experience for you. In fact, we will still put out seven candles and we did our best to, to darken the space in there so that maybe we can try and have a worship service that feels like ones we've had in the past. But it is going to feel different. Maybe we can make the most of that. For starters, I invite you to find seven candles from around your house. Please don't go buy, buying any extras. You can stay at home. Uh, or if you just have seven light switches around your house that you can turn off with each of the seven last words, you'll see uh, when you get to do that because I'll be putting candles out as well. Maybe that will feel more like something you can participate in worship, hopefully. But maybe there's no real replacement for the kind of service we're used to having, that sort of group shared experience of grief and tragedy and, and power even in those words in that music. Maybe there's no way to really replace that. That's okay. I invite you to consider that on the very first Good Friday, all of Jesus' disciples scattered and went on their own ways and, and hid in their own places, alone, afraid, in the dark. This Good Friday is going to be more like that than any Good Friday you've ever known before. Let the experience mean something to you. Be willing to feel what it's like to be on your own, to be alone, to, to be afraid. Let yourself feel those emotions that we try so hard to hide and push down and deny. It's okay to admit that you're feeling lonely, that you're feeling frightened, that you're feeling unsure of what the future brings. All those things are true. And there is room in our faith to express them and feel them honestly. Of all the days of the year, Good Friday is a day that knows how we feel alone and, and frightened and, and like we don't know what's going on and how can God have abandoned us like this? All of Jesus' disciples felt those very things on that first Good Friday. It's okay to feel them this Good Friday. Wherever you are, you might feel alone, but you're not alone. 
We are united even though we are apart. And God is always with us. I hope that as you join us in worship this Good Friday later today, I, I hope you know those things and are able to give voice to your fears and anxieties and also your hopes in this time. In close, I want to read for you a prayer from our tradition for this Good Friday. Merciful God, your son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I hope that you will find mercy in Jesus, that even as you know the fear and abandonment of this day, this day when we remember that Christ died for us, was abandoned and forsaken for us, when we remember this day that we know death will not have the final word, we are not forsaken. Easter is coming.